Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. So today I wanted to talk about an actual algorithm which has been used in a self-driving vehicle. So this algorithm is called Hybrid A-Star and the goal is to find a smooth optimal path joining a start node and a goal node. So the idea is that in this particular figure, we, the start node is indicated by a red cross, the blue cross indicates the goal node, and the black circles indicate the obstacle. So if you go over the A star algorithm, the path that it gives is something which is discontinuous. So if an actual vehicle tries to follow it, then it won't be able to follow it really closely because when it's trying to do a maneuver where the straight lines meet, then it will really find it difficult to follow it exactly. However, in hybrid A star, since it's incorporating the vehicle dynamics into picture, so the path that it gives is a smooth one. If the vehicle dynamics are corresponding to the self-driving vehicle, then the path that it generates can be followed easily by a autonomous vehicle. That was like the high level idea between A star and hybrid A star and the main difference. If you haven't watched out my video on A star, I really suggest you to watch it. Uh, it really goes over the algorithmic details on how A star works. And if you are clear on it, then understanding hybrid A star becomes really easy. All right. So now consider that you're given the map and you're dividing that map into these different grid cells. And each cell has this representation center. So if you're working with a star algorithm the path that you actually get is one where all these representation centers are joined by straight lines so if an autonomous vehicle is trying to follow it then very sharp maneuvers such as these where two lines are meeting at 90 degree angles they these paths won't be followed easily because there is a minimum radius of curvature which a car follows so that is something which is an issue in hybrid A-star, what it tries to do is that these representation centers are sort of moved according to the vehicle dynamics. So whenever there is an optimal path that it tries to make, it goes through these representation centers which are moved. And so the path that it actually gives is a one which is satisfying the vehicle dynamics and is smooth. So the vehicle will be able to easily follow it and go from a start node to goal node. That's the main principal difference between A star and hybrid A star. Now I would like to go a bit deep into how hybrid A star works. So first I just want you to focus on the left hand side of this particular slide. So these are some of the parameters that you are already given to you. So you are given the start node which is given by these three coordinates. So the first coordinate is indicating the X position, the second is indicating the Y position, and the third one is indicating the orientation of the vehicle. If you consider the bottom left figure, what we have is the vehicle which is oriented according to how the start node is written. The orientation is at zero degree and so it's parallel to the X axis. The end node is at 3590 degrees, so the vehicle is oriented perpendicular to the X axis at position 3.5. The next information that is given to us is that the input velocity here is considered between minus one and one, and the input steering angles are considered as three particular angles, so minus 30 degrees, zero degrees, and 30 degrees. You can consider more values, but the issue is that the computational overload becomes too much. So we are just considering these particular input values. The next parameter that's given to you is the length of the vehicle, which is one. So if you try to combine all these possible input velocities and input steering angles, we get six combinations. So the first three combinations are corresponding to when the vehicle tries to go in the backward direction and there is the steering angle of minus 30 degrees, zero degree and 30 degree. The next combination is when the vehicle is going in the forward direction and the steering is going from minus 30 degrees, zero degree and 30 degree. Another parameter that's given to you is these additional costs. And if you see here, the first three parameters are sort of greater than the next three parameters inside this list. The reason is that we don't want the hybrid A-star algorithm to give us paths where, where the vehicle is going in the backward direction quite often. So we want paths which are dominated by how the vehicle is going in the forward direction. And so the costs that are associated with the vehicle going forward or steering slightly 
from minus 30 degree to 30 degree they are penalized smaller compared to say when you are trying to when the vehicle is trying to go in the backward direction and there is some steering angles the last thing that's given to you is how the vehicle dynamics model works this information helps you know how x y and theta would evolve as a function of time on the left hand side we are computing at time t what are the position and the angular orientation of the vehicle and on the right hand side we are given the dependency on the previous time instant value and some other mathematics which is corresponding to the dynamics equations of the vehicle so with all this information that we have we can proceed with how hybrid a star works here we have a table which comprises information regarding open paths the continuous coordinates co corresponding to this open paths discrete coordinates and the total cost so when we are starting at the start node s then the continuous coordinate is 0 0 0 as we are already given that information the discrete coordinate is actually the rounded off version of the continuous coordinate and the reason behind it we are going to discuss it in a couple of slides so for instance if the continuous coordinate was instead given by 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 then the discrete coordinate would be 0 0 0 so discrete coordinate is just the rounded off version of the continuous coordinate the total cost is going to be comprising of three components so one is the cost to come to node n then h of n is the cost to go from node n to goal node and the additional cost is the cost that we just considered over here so since we are starting at node s gn is zero the hn component can be done by euclidean distance between the start node and the goal node and the additional cost component here would be zero so the total cost comes out to be 6.03 units next we are going to move into the second part of this algorithm which is that you also maintain an information regarding visited paths so since here in the open path we have node s we consider its six possible neighbors so in this particular figure on the bottom left if you see we have six neighbors where the car is either going in the forward direction and then steering towards 30 degrees zero degrees or minus 30 degrees or if it goes in the backward direction then it can steer in the same angles so corresponding to those, we have six components that come. So these are S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. Once these nodes are put inside the open path table, the S node is closed because we have already explored it now and the S node comes into the visited path. And the information corresponding to the continuous coordinates, discrete coordinates and total cost all come together inside this. Now, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 are corresponding to the inputs minus 1, minus 30 degree, minus 1, 0, and so on and so forth. So when we are calculating the continuous coordinates of node S1, then we are going to put the values of coordinate S inside these three equations. And we are going to put corresponding velocity V, which is minus 1, and delta minus 30 degree inside these and get theta x, y at node s1 then calculate the discrete coordinates as i told earlier these are just the rounded off versions so if you round off minus 0.86 it becomes minus one if we round off minus 0.5 that becomes minus one here in this case and uh, 30 degrees is 30 degrees so now to calculate the total cost we compute g of n h of n and additional cost so in this particular case you can use the euclidean distance to calculate how much cost is there from node s to s1 and similarly h of n is going from node s1 to goal node and the additional cost is corresponding to this component point 0.2 so if you add all of this together it comes out to be 8.16 and similarly you can repeat this process for all other possible neighbors now the node s comma s6 has the least cost here in all of these explorations so we consider this as the node n from where we will continue exploring other different paths and in the next iteration we put this s comma s6 in the visited path list and the corresponding information and then its neighbors x s61 s62 and so on and so forth are put inside this open path 
Now you can do similar computations as I told you earlier regarding continuous coordinates. The discrete coordinates would be just the rounded off versions and the total cost would be computed in a very similar manner. So in this particular case, when we are calculating g of n, since we are going from path s to s6 and then s6 to s61, then s to s6 cost, which is here is 1.23 units, that comes as it is. And then you can use the Euclidean distance formula to go from node s6 to s61. And that component is about 1.15 here. h of n is the Euclidean distance from node s61 to go node. So you can keep on doing this algorithm and once you reach the goal node G, then the idea is that if that node has the lowest cost, then that path is the one which is the most optimal one. So that's when uh, we will terminate the algorithm and that particular aspect really resembles how the H star algorithm works. So in a manner of speaking, we are computing some additional information, but at the end, it's exactly similar to how A star is working. Now I will explain why discrete coordinates are essential. As you can see, like in these just couple of iterations, we have almost 10 possible paths which we can now explore. So you can just imagine that if you go for five, six iterations, this is just going to explode exponentially. Now you can imagine that if we just had the continuous coordinates and we were not maintaining the discrete coordinates, then say you have two nodes which are relatively close. For instance, in continuous coordinate, you might have a node like S5, say 100, zero, zero. and you might have another possible node which is 0.99, 0, 0. Now, both of them are really close together. So in this particular algorithm, in order to maintain tractability, we are considering the discrete node. So for instance, the case that I just talked about, if the discrete version or the rounded off version comes out to be same, then what we are going to compare is the total cost. So if in open path list, you already had a path which gives you a lower cost, then you won't consider that particular neighbor. So you can just outrightly reject that particular node like 0 0.9900. Another thing is that suppose say the node that you just considered, which has the same discrete coordinate, it's appearing for the first time in this open path table. It's possible that in the visited path, you already had uh, one particular route which is connecting to that node. So you also need to compare the cost of that neighbor which you are trying to explore as of now with the node that might be there inside the visited path. So if in this particular box you have a discrete coordinate which is exactly similar to the neighbor that you are considering right now and you already have a path which is of lower cost, then that is the path that would be considered for reaching that node in and you can outrightly reject the node that you are probing to explore. Hence, in a nutshell, like in order to maintain this tractability aspect and in order to ensure that we are not having too many nodes with different coordinates, we are using these discrete coordinate versions and just seeing whether those discrete values are same or not. Now, I just want to go over some of the examples that I kind of saw. So these are the maps that were uh, given to us and here the red cross and the blue cross indicate the start node and the goal node respectively. So in A star we can see that the path somewhat jerky. Uh, in hybrid A star we can see the path is really smooth so that's one key advantage that we can see right here. Then another example that I just want to show is that suppose say you have the start node which is inside this particular wall region. You can see that the A star algorithm is giving you paths which are like really sharp whereas in hybrid a star you're getting a very smooth path which uh, an autonomous vehicle can easily navigate the third example is some sort of similar but here i just want to point out that if you see the a star algorithm then when it's starting from x the red x and going till the blue x you can see that the a star algorithm has a lot of jerky motion the hybrid a star gives you a really nice 
uh, path. And as far as this, this is concerned, where you are able to see this particular motion, if you change the additional cost variable that we defined earlier, for instance, here, you can get this path to be even smoother. So there is some uh, interplay with the different parameters to get the paths that you desired. So if you guys are interested, this was actually the paper that talked about this hybrid A-star algorithm. So Junior, which was uh, the entry of Stanford vehicle in this DARPA urban challenge, they were the first ones who devised this algorithm. So if you're interested in reading more about this paper, I'll attach it, uh, I'll put it in the description. And in this, you can go over what sensors and how they kind of build this entire vehicle and they have provided all the details regarding hybrid A-star. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you.